All right. So let's go. Oops, somebody else come in. All right. Huh? So on the passenger side, we have a panther named Buddy. And Buddy has a tawny brown fur. He weighs over 100 pounds. And he's five years old. His birthday was July 4th. But he's been with us since he was only five months old when he was a pup. Somebody had him illegally as a pet. And he escaped and he was rescued by the Florida Fish Wildlife Conservation Commission and brought here. Welcome to the show. Just joining us. Stay seated. Keep those arms and legs and stuff. Thank you, Carola. So we're going to go up now. And uh, the Florida Panther, the reason they are endangered, that means they're on the brink of extinction, is because of habitat loss, our fatalities, and the invasive Burmese pythons that were brought here during the pet train and released in the Everglades by pet owners. Those pythons are eating all the animals. You know, panthers, they hunt animals for their food. Uh, so the deer, the raccoon, the opossums, the birds are shot at the panthers. Wow. The pythons are eating all those animals. Yep. No, that's not good. Yep. But conservation efforts are helping. And they have python hunts where they go have competitions to go hunt for the pythons. You know. Oh, we just passed the koi pond, National Fish of Japan. There's some big, beautiful ones in there. Uh, and then we have a sculpture of a flamingo here. Where you can take where you may take pictures of uh, beautiful sculpture back. And we also have the Lego sculpture throughout the Arboretum, uh, and some are in the gallery as well. So the animals in our enclosure are non releasable. They were rescued. We're a rehab. We're not a zoo. We're not a pet zoo. So please do not try to pet any of the animals. There's a rooster on the over by the pond there. This crow in flew in a couple of years ago. He likes it so much he made Flamingo Gardens his new home. Now, we have lots of other animals roaming around. They were born here or donated or brought in with interest. Now, there we have uh, the flamingos in the pond. Oh, James is the only flamingo that's been born here. And he, we, he just, so we just celebrated his fifth birthday. There he's in the middle. You can see him with his head straight up. Is, uh, the males are taller than the females, and he's making that sound. Right, and uh, uh, they get their color from eating algae and crustaceans like shrimp. They want the flamingo food that the crimp pellet with the carrot in our plant. And then the white birds are American white ibis. Those ibis are called Florida take of hurricane birds. They're the last animals to leave before a hurricane comes. The first ones to return after the hurricane has passed. The ibis with the brown feathers, those are the most juvenile. They molt and get, uh, they uh, become adults, they'll get the white feathers. Uh. Now, why the flamingos, when you go around the woods, there are bobcats, alligators, turtles, tortoises, river otters, and the bear. On the passenger side, you'll see the peacock with the blue neck. Every fall, if they're three years or older, they grow the beautiful train which they shed in the summer. So a lot of them have shed their train already. Uh, but they only use it during mating season when they fan it out and show it off to attract peahens. And the peahens lay eggs from April through August. Uh, some, you'll see some with their peaches. Uh, the gallery, that great building, that's where the Lego, some of the Lego sculptures are. You can also build your own sculptures in the gallery, and it's air-conditioned, so that's a nice place to be. Here's the Ray Home is also air-conditioned, it's a museum, and it was built 90 years ago, in 1933. It was the second home of Jane and Floyd Ray. The Rays founded Flamingo Gardens. Uh, they started, they bought this property, Jane and Floyd Ray, and in 1927, they started a citrus grove here. It was called Flamingo Grove. They also started the Botanical Gardens, so there are some uh, plants around. I, I'm going to tell you about some of these plants. Now, some are native to other countries across the globe. And the front, we're now exiting the front 10 acres on the passenger side. We have two trees, an avocado and a cannonball. The cannonball is the one with round that's shaped like a cannonball, and it's flowering. It flowers all year round, native to Central and South America. Now on the driver's side, you'll see more pea There's a pine peacock. He has some white feathers. But if you see one that's all white, it's called a leucistic. Uh, Indian peacock is a national bird of India. Now, the, the, the pine peacock is Canada's 
want them to light you see. But before the lighting, you'll see another avocado, and it has young fruit on it. Avocados are native to Mexico. It is the national fruit of Mexico. The lychee is native to China. And in front of the lychee tree, you'll see some citrus. Citrus is also native to China. And then we have bananas. Here we have a bunch of bananas banana. hanging from the plant. This is a young bunch. Uh, takes three to six months before it will work, depending on the variety. That one just started such a fruit uh, three weeks ago. So it's uh, quite a while before it will ripen. Will ripen. Once the bananas ripen, the plant dies. There are hundreds of varieties of bananas. So it takes anywhere from several months up to two years or more. A couple more here that have fruit all in the See the bunch of banana hanging from the top, and uh, the purple bud comes out first. Uh, and uh, the roots will send out new plants to replace it because it only fruits once. Uh, and so lots of new plants will come up from the root, from the roots. Uh, and the leaves, you can wrap food in banana leaves, boil it, roast it, grill it, steam it. It imparts a herb like to the food. You can serve food on banana leaves and, and also uh, store food in banana leaves. Now, um, I'm going to show you another fruit as well. But before I tell you about this other fruit, I want you to look to the passenger side on the right. You'll see a shrub with white flowers. It's called jasmine. And it has a really sweet fragrance. They actually use them to make perfume. So inhale as we pass that jasmine. Take a deep breath in, and you'll smell that sweet nice in the air. Now, the largest fruit that grows on the tree is called jackfruit. You'll see it, and we do have that some, uh, for sale in the gift shop. So look to the, the driver's side, and you'll see in the middle that tree with a V-shaped trunk, and all those fruit, all those shaped fruit hanging from the branches. A single jackfruit can weigh anywhere from 10 pounds up to over 100 pounds. Native to South Asia, the national food of Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. And if you like the chocolate, it is with a chocolate tree, also known as cacao. So on the passenger side, look at this uh, shrub as it passes the tree palm. You see cacao pods hanging from the branches. Well, once they ripen, it's the cacao beans inside the pods that are processed to make cocoa and chocolate. And it was in southern Mexico where chocolate was first cultivated about 4,000 years ago. As you pass the chocolate tree, you'll see another avocado followed by more bananas. And we're going to be climbing up a natural elevation into a tropical hardwood tropic. We're pushing some heliconia from both sides. Now these three olives, you'll find them in the Everglades and in the Florida Keys and also on both the south coast of Florida. There are lots of plants that grow in these hardwood hammocks. In the other store, you'll see shrubs like Cava Cava, more heliconias, ginger, durium, uh, paru, Brazilian rancho. But you'll also see palm and hardwood trees like kukui, poisonous, that popping out is a kukui fruit, kukui is a mat, is a state tree of Hawaii, and uh, they make the, the beautiful necklaces with the seeds. They also burn them as, as part of it because those kukui seeds are high in oil. And then we have epiphytes growing up the trees uh, on the solidandrins. Now, animals that live in these hardwood hammocks include black bears and bobcats, panthers, deer, raccoons, opossums, birds, snakes. But centuries, even as far back as 12,000 years, there were Native Americans living on these three islands, like the Cactus, Calusa, Jacobs, and other tribes. Ooh, on the right, the passenger side, we have another jasmine plant. Take a deep breath in as we go by. And there's another one on the driver's side. Look at those white flowers. Huh? Now we're climbing up, ooh, that sounds really sweet. Now we're climbing up into uh, the native hardwood house. And the Native Americans lived on these three islands in Chiquita Hut. They would go canoeing out into the Everglades from one tree island to the next. Then there were hunters and gatherers. Some were farmers, uh, and artifacts are found belonging to them, like dug out canoes and tools made from stone and shells, and clay pots which they could prepare and serve and for their food. Art comes to those and they can still get tribes living in the Amazon area. 
the driver side, we have a man-made pond, and we have these royal palms, really tall. We have the pond apple trees with some fruit on it. And then next to where you see the more cypress trees, we have some uh, Muscovy ducks here. The Muscovy ducks, they have black, white, black. Oh, the males are larger than good. the females. And they grow wow. that wattle on their face. Now they are native to Mexico, Central and South America. They are patterns of emigrate palm. And in, 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 the, in the water there, right by the edge, that small black bird with a red face here, that's a Martian. The Martians are native to Florida. Uh, there's a turtle up ahead, lots of turtles, fish and other animals live in the water here. So they're very skittish. Sometimes they'll go in the water when the tram comes by. But you see, see if it stays on the look on the trunk there, you'll see many different species of turtles and sliders, hoots and soft turtles. And the aquatic plants filter and clean the water and provide oxygen and exercise for the animals. There go the ibis flying across the pond. Every year, this is where Flamingo Gardens release the, the native hatchlings uh, back into the wild. Uh, oh, there's water duck. I also saw. Uh, they're so well camouflaged that you can almost miss them. Look on the ground there, right next to the edge of the pond, next to the rock. You'll see a monster duck. That's what they make first. So we do take in a lot of injured birds every day. And if it has a lot of injury after rehabilitation in our clinic, they can release them. have been released so far. A few of our awards that will stay, uh, they all get taken care of by our animal keepers. This is the wetlands walkway where you can go over to the dump, look out in the water, see a more animals there, and then a plant. And then here on this side of the pond, you'll see lots more aquatic plants. But look on the ground below the cypress tree. These wooden knobs are called cypress leaves. Those these anchors stabilize the tree in the wet soil. So cypress trees, they live to be over a thousand years old, and they grow to be over a hundred feet tall. Uh, the wood of the cypress is very sturdy, it's rock resistant, also insect resistant. So Native Americans, they use the trunks of the cypress trees to build their chicky huts and also their dug out canoes. All right, folks, if you like to eat mangoes, we're heading into the mango grove and harvesting the mangoes from the tree. We're going to make a big cup for a dollar each. So we have 12 varieties of mangoes here, but worldwide there are over a thousand Oh, look at the Muscovy duck, but there are two other duck species here. The brown one is a Hindu camel, and the gray one is a But look up into the mango trees, you'll see fruit. And mangoes are native to South Asia. It's the national fruit of India, Pakistan, the Muslims, and the Haiti. The mango tree is a national tree of Bacchida. So pirates brought these trees here to Florida. We have uh, some Egyptian sheep. That sound is a female Egyptian goose. Once they find a mate, they stay with their mates their entire life. So you see the raccoons, the iguanas, or the birds, the screw come over and get to enjoy the mangoes too. Now the Egyptian geese, they are native to Northeast Africa, and they were introduced here as an ornamental bird for food. And some of them had a stick on those trees. Now the mango trees are putting out new leaves. May, June, July is when we harvest mangoes. So there's still a few left. We're at the end of the harvest now. So buy those mangoes before they're all gone. They're so delicious. And they're very nutritious. The mangoes are in the poison ivy family. So if you get a rash or a blister, that's because you're allergic to it if you come in contact with it. Now the, over here on the passenger side, the cactus and succulent garden. This was planted on last year, May, from a donation from Lingo Garden had received. And these plants, you'll find them in deserts. See the baobab? That's a national tree of Madagascar. Made into Madagascar, Africa, Australia. The see a punch in Syria, the agave, the all kinds of old plants here. They all store water and modify their structure to conserve that water. Then we have the pollination garden and the butterfly conservatory. This conservatory opened uh, March 4th this year, but we have been rearing butterflies for over two years now and releasing them on the property. So this is the stop where we're going to stop. We have a, a minute to go inside, two minutes at the most. 
and then you come back on the train. Remember, I have to get back to the station by 11 o'clock huh? before okay. the next train pulls out. So quickly go inside, open the door, go inside, oh, and come back on the Thank you. I actually think it's the same temperature. Thank you. Oh, holy. Thank you. Okay, welcome back everyone. Just to remind you of the safety rules, stay seated, keep those arms and legs aside. So, every day we release butterflies here on the property, some in the butterfly house. Anywhere from 10 to 50 butterflies get released. Really we provide the plants they need to lay their eggs on. The eggs hatch into caterpillars, the caterpillars eat the leaves, form a chrysalis, and then emerge as a butterfly. Once they emerge as a butterfly, they need a nectar for their food. So we plant the flowers, and the flowers will give them their food. Sometimes we slice fruit up, because they like that as well. And uh, so Florida has about 170 native species of butterflies, and another 200 species migrate through Florida each year. They are rare and endangered because of habitat loss and other factors. So we're trying, our aim here is habitat of restoration. That's one of our goals. Oh, now we're in the cycad garden. And look to the passenger side. You'll see some cone, a cone, large brown cone. You'll see some on the driver's side with cones too. Now cycads are also an endangered species. They produce cones on their trunks. There are males and females. And the male cones produce pollen, the female cones produce seeds, and they're pollinated by insects such as beetles. Kunji is the oldest cycad that is native to Florida, and it's the host plant for Florida's native and danger, the Taliban plant. So they are protected by law, and it is illegal to remove them from the wild. Here's another man-made pond. Wetlands are a very important ecosystem. They replenish the water table, help prevent flooding and soil erosion from heavy rainfall. And migratory birds visit Florida's woodlands every year in the fall and winter and raise their families here. We have a mute swan that likes to hang out back here. Sometimes it's in the water, sometimes it's on land. I see it up ahead there. And it flew in last year, it's free to leave at any time. Uh, on the passenger side is a tropical fruit garden, and that's where we have more plants, not native to Florida, but they grow here and give us food, like sapodilla, who I see some green iguanas over there, uh, the cinnamon apple and other trees. Now here we have the mute swan, take a look at me, go by, national bird of the kingdom of Denmark, and they too were introduced in the United States in the late 19th or the 20th century as an ornamental bird. We're climbing up another tree island. This is Mount Flamingo. It's 26 and a half feet above sea level, and it's the second highest natural elevation in Broward County. On the passenger side, you'll see more baobab trees and another row of cycads. But the tree with the peeling bark is rainbow eucalyptus. As it ages over time, more rainbow colors will come out on the trunk, and it's native to Indonesia and the Philippines. The two large gray spiky plants are blue agave, and in Mexico, it's the heart of the blue agave used to make tequila and agave. On the driver's side, you'll see star fruit, also known as carambola, fingers native to Southeast Asia. And then the six palms on the driver's side is Florida State Tree, the Sable's Palm. It's on the state flag of Florida. 
Oh, now on passenger side, you'll see a tree with some round green fruit. That's calabash. They used to, those shoes I used to make maracas, burnouses, storage containers, eaten, drinking bowls, and other items. Okay, now we're back in the front and acres and everything in the section you go by foot. We'll be a map from Black Bear, the River Otters Alley, and so just to store this box of flamingos or their other packers. On the driver's side of the way, home and the gallery, make sure to go inside. And you'll see the oak trees here or on, on the driver's side. That oak is a national tree of the United States. They live to be hundreds of years old and provide habitat for many species of plants and animals. At night time, all the peace out roots in the oak. And you'll see orchids, bromeliads, and other plants growing in that moment. To get to the Aviary Bird of Exhibit and the Amphitheater, this path here on the driver's side will take you there. In half an hour, there will be a wildlife encounter show at the Amphitheater. And it's a half an hour show. They bring out a bird, mammal, and a reptile and teach you about them. I'm now going back into the station. Thanks for taking the tour. I hope you enjoy your visit with us today. Be sure to check your seats, collect all your items, and please keep your head down when you disembark the tramp. And remember, folks, we have Buddy of Florida Petra. They'll have a cancer talk over there. Having a cancer talk now. So make sure to go see them. Thank you, everyone.